So now that we are done with the vectors, the introduction to vectors, we start talking about matrices. This is part one of matrices. Right. The goals of this uh, lecture is to understand the definitions of following concepts and see some examples of them. First, definition of a matrix. Then we talk about dimensions of a matrix, block matrices, diagonal and triangular matrices, and adjacency matrix. All right. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers and is denoted as a bolded capital letter. For example, here, matrix A has these elements and is represented using this notation. The size of a matrix is given uh, its dimensions. Row dimensions multiplied by the column dimensions. For example, matrix A is equal to one, two, minus two, three, four, six, eight, minus one, zero. So this matrix it has three rows and it has three, three columns. So this is a three by three matrix. Or the other matrix that we had in the example, it has one, two rows, and three column. So it's a two by three matrix. All right. Each element of a matrix can be represented by the name of matrix IJ, where I shows the row and J shows the column of that element. Just to give you a generic representation, matrix A can be represented as A11, A12, A13, A21, A31, A sub 32, A sub 33. So this is a representation for a three by three matrix. Just to give you an idea, A12 means row one and column two. Row one and column two. So this is A sub one, two. Two matrices are equal if they have the same dimensions. What does that mean? They have the same rows and columns, the same number of rows and columns and their corresponding entries are equal. For example, matrix A is equal to minus five, zero, six, two, and matrix P is equal to minus five, zero, six, two. So as you can see, both of these matrices here are two by two, so they have the same dimension, and the corresponding elements are equal. So minus five is equal to minus five. Zero, zero. Two is equal to two. And six is equal to six. So matrices A and B are equal. All right. So dimensions of a matrix. Let A uh, to be a matrix with dimensions M and N. So A has M rows and M N columns. The matrix is called a tall matrix if M is greater than N. So let's uh, look at a tall matrix that has, so M greater than N, one, two, zero, minus five, three, eight, Four, six. So what are the dimensions of A? A has one, two, three, four, four rows and one, two columns. So as you can see, four is greater than two, which means matrix 
A is a tall matrix. The second definition, the matrix is by if M is less than one, less than M. Example, zero minus three, four, minus five, two, point five, six. So matrix B, it has two rows and four columns, two by four. So matrix B, is a boy matrix. This is the second example. And the matrix is a square if M is equal to N. Matrix C, I define matrix C to be eight, four point three, two, minus one. So matrix C is two by two. So M is equal to N. Number of rows is equal to number of columns, which means matrix C is a, a square matrix. So something else that I want to mention here before we move forward is you can represent matrices as a set of vectors. For example, matrix B, the first column is a vector. The second column can be represented as a vector. The third column can be represented as a vector. The fourth column can be represented as a vector. Also, each row of a matrix can be represented as a vector. All right, block matrices. Block matrices are the matrices whose entries are, are, are also matrices. For example, matrix A is created by block matrix by matrices B, C, E, and D. So where matrix B is defined as 0, 2, 3, matrix C minus 1, matrix D is a 2 by 3 matrix, and matrix E 4 by 4. So we show them here also. This is matrix B, C, D, and E. We also can show it like as we have here. So B is a one by three matrix. C is a one by one matrix. D is a two by three matrix. And E is a two by one matrix. So the overall matrix is going to be one, two, three, by one, two, three, four, a three by four matrix. So now we want to talk about diagonal matrices. Diagonal matrices are square matrices where all of their elements are zero except the elements where number of row is number of columns. So if I want to show it like this, it's going to have A sub 1, 1, A sub 2, 2, A sub 3, 3, and A sub N, N, and all the other elements are zero. So this is for an N by N matrix. All right, uh, let's see some examples. We also sometimes show diagonal matrix by DIAG parentheses, A sub 1 to A sub N, where these values show the diagonal, the non-zero diagonal elements. So just uh, to show you an example, uh, the diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements 0 0.2, minus 3, and 1.2 is represented as this. Another example of diagonal element, A is diagonal 0 and 2 means zero to the other elements are zero. Or B is diagonal one minus five, one minus five, zero, zero. This is how we define diagonal matrices. We also have this definition for uh, triangular matrices. We have two definitions for triangular matrices. The lower triangular, 
where a sub ij or odd elements are zero below the tri below uh, the triangle and upper triangular uh, where all of the elements above the diagonal elements are zero. So this is one example of triangular matrix. Another example is A is equal to, again, we just need to make sure for lower triangular, lower triangular, whatever is here is zero. Other than this, you have freedom for the elements. Four, zero, six. So what we care here is all these elements should be zero to make sure that this is a lower triangular matrix. Adjacency matrix. We can use a matrix to represent a graph. So there could be a, a graph. So we had this in discrete structure course as well. So you're given a graph and we ask you to represent it using a matrix. That can help you to do further computing and processes uh, that is more convenient when you use matrices instead of a graphical representation. The convention that we are using uh, here for undirected edges is represented below. So for an edge, if there is an edge, we represent it by one. If there is no edge, we represent it by zero. If there is a loop, if there is a self-loop, on uh, one of the vertices, uh, we represent it as two. So for those of you who haven't taken uh, the courses that talk about graphs, a graph is a combination of some nodes, we call them vertex, and these vertices are connected using some lines which are referred to as edges. So this is edge, and this is vertex. So when you have graph G, graph G can be represented by vertices and edges. All right, now let's take a look at an example. We have a graph with four vertices, one, two, three, four, five edges, and one loop, one self loop. Or in order to show the matrix that corresponds to this graph, first you have to label each of the vertices. Here we call this number one, we call this vertex two, vertex three, vertex four. Or how does that help us? Let me show you here. So this graph, it has four vertices, so it's going to be represented by a four by four uh, adjacency matrix. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. First of all, we see if there is a loop from one to one. So there is a loop from one to one. So what we are going to do, we are going to use value two for this element of our matrix. Then between one and two, is there any edge between one and two? No, so we choose zero. Same from two to one, we choose zero. Anything from one to three, yes. So this element is going to be one. From three to one, also one. From one to four, there is an edge. So we use one here, from four to one, also one. Now let's go to number two. From two, we have an edge to three, an edge to four. We have an edge to three, an edge to four. And two is, doesn't have a self-loop. There is not a self-loop here. All right. From three, three to one is connected. Three to two is connected. Three to four is also connected. And three is not connected to itself using a loop. For four, is connected to all of them except itself. All right, this is the adjacency matrix of this graph. 
This is another application of matrices. So this was a, an introduction to matrices, part one of matrices. First, we talked about definition of matrices, their dimension. We said that we show matrix A, which is M by N, where M is number of rows and N is number of columns. We talked about block matrices, diagonal matrices, and try angular matrices. We talked about the scenario where two matrices are equal. If you recall, they should have the same dimension. That's the very basic definition, the very basic requirement. And finally, we talked about representing a graph using adjacency matrix. So you are given a graph on directed graph, and you determine an adjacency matrix for this graph. So I'm going to solve this example here. Let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. What we have to do, one, two, four, here. All right, this is going to be a six by six matrix. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one is only connected to two. So all elements are zero, except this. Two is connected to one, four, and three. Two is connected to one, three, and four. Three is connected to two and five. Four is connected to two, and there is a self loop. So four is connected to two. And there is a self loop, so we add a two here. Five is connected to three and six. So this is going to be one. And six is only connected to five. All right, this is a six by six adjacency matrix for this graph. This was part one of matrices.